So you've traveled abroad to a Western country and somebody asks you, wow, you're from Africa. So how is it like living there? What do you respond to that? It might go something like, yeah, I'm from East Africa. Um, it's kind of a different life, but we all speak English. We have a KFC. We got a Pizza Hut. So it's not that different. Think about that response. When we're trying to describe our country or our continent as a whole, we tend to focus on the qualities that is Western. We forget the fact that the world's most genetically diverse people are here. They belong to 3,000 tribes. They speak 2,000 languages. And we also forget to, tend to mention the fact that we have readily available fresh produce on our markets. We have unique methods of transports like matatus and tuk-tuks, which you don't get in many places. Our generation is making a grave mistake, and it's a mistake we must recognize because we are worsening the image of Africa. And by this generation, I mean you and me, because we're the future, and we're the leaders of today and tomorrow. So why do we still seek validation from the West? We are the sole representation of Africa and its people in the 21st century, but we travel back so ancient. Let us look at a different scenario. When I was growing up and it was time for me to learn my languages, my mom was certain that I had to know Gujarati, which is my native language. But the debate came to play when deciding between English and Kiswahili. You see, my mom went to a Kiswahili medium school. So she learned math, history, science, all in our national language. And as she pursued her passion for being an educator, her language didn't hinder her development. In fact, she graduated with a PhD recently. And she has maintained her love and fluency for the language. So it's understandable that she would want her daughter to grow up in the exact same language and its cultures. But our society ridiculed her. It seemed odd. They said I'd turn out to be uneducated. They said I would be socially disadvantaged. They said I wouldn't be ready for the world, but here I am. And I want to thank my mom for making that decision because I love speaking Kiswahili. And it saddens me to know that in parts of East Africa, the culture of speaking this language is slowly but surely fading away. When you look at these two scenarios, you can easily tell that we somehow affiliate this, this Western culture with superiority. We can see it by the mere fact that we affiliate superiority just with the English language. We see it through our fashion sense, our dietary choices, and the fact that we commonly promote Western art over our own. And nowadays, countries have started to, be, to think that Westernization and development are the same thing, which they are not. Africa needs to realize this. So what do I mean by the Western world? As seen in this picture, the red countries, which include Canada, the US, and most of Europe, are the Western world. And if you take a closer look, or even a look from a mile away, you can tell how little population and land they actually occupy, at least in comparison to the rest of the blue world. Yet, Africa, the magnanimous continent, and all of its 54 countries are so focused on mirroring that tiny fraction. That's a curse we must break through from. Because this superiority is the root cause of our problem, whereby westernization is hindering our African innovation. When we suppress the option of coming up with new and authentic ideas, we continue to be inferior. Until we start looking within rather than beyond, until we start coming up with our authentic ideas to solve our own problems. We must take authority of our progress. Forget coming up with innovations. What about the pre-existing knowledge systems? 
What about our traditions and cultures? The stuff that's already been discovered by our ancestors. We disregard it as if it's inadequate. And we've reached a time and place where we think they're inadequate and that is sad because they are so valid to our continent's development. When you take a look at a case study in, Ni in the Niger Republic, where the World Bank swooped in to deal with the problem of food scarcity due to drought, they employed a project that costed over $100 million, and guess what? It failed miserably. And in the exact same African country, they were using a traditional method known as tasa, which is positively flourishing. This farming technique included digging dams and holes in order to collect the rainwater and naturally irrigate the crops. Simple. But why didn't the World Bank consider it? Why didn't they use it? Because Niger would have solved their problem a long time ago if they did. Countries like Malawi, Chad, Zambia, they could implement this exact same African system of farming. And if we gave the well-deserved credit to our African ideas, then maybe our continent would have been in a much better place. Perhaps Muammar Gaddafi was right. As controversial as it may have been, he was right in, in uniting the people of Africa to believe in themselves rather than pleading the world to believe in us. Because it's ironic that the same people we plead to believe in us are those who defined us in the first place. Our continent has been so heavily influenced by the West, our countries were drawn on a map by the West when they discovered us. Think about it. Was it that our knowledge and culture was non-existent before a Portuguese navigator sailed to our coast? They literally validated our existence. So it's no wonder that our leaders continue to idolize it and make our countries look more like the West. Ladies and gentlemen, I must re-emphasize that these two concepts are just not the same. There's an ongoing cultural imperialism. And as we let that imperialism go by, we're washing away the remains of our cultures and our traditions. Let's take a very common example. Most of us used forks and knives to eat our dinner today. Why didn't you use your hands? You might say it's unhygienic, unhealthy, ill-mannered. The list goes on, but you're wrong. Because your fingers, they contain natural bacteria, which is good for your gut, and it helps in digestion. But that's just too uncivilized nowadays. It was my mom's decision that Western ideals were simply not ideal for my family that have enabled me to engage with my community. Being able to speak in Kiswahili has given me a new lens to look, to look through and live my life, and I would never give that up. So just like my mom did, what are some of the choices you could make? Number one, being mindful. Being conscious of your decisions. What you say, what you eat, what you wear, it makes a difference because you are an important piece of the big solution puzzle. So I hope you play your part. Number two, redefine your terms. Westernization, development, they're subjective, I promise. <laughs> they're subjective to your own lives. So you need to make a definition that is relevant to you. And this might sound kind of easy, but it's not. It's hard for our minds to practice. And when things get hard, we question. When things get hard, we question and we start to give up. Because sometimes there's some Western solutions our continent might not be able to survive without. Things like the education systems. It's controversial, but maybe Africa would be worse off without the West. Maybe there's some ideas we just have to borrow. But that's okay because we live in an interdependent world, right? In, this, in such scenarios, we need to, number three, contextualize the knowledge. We cannot adopt, we must adapt, so that it fits into our context. We must not mirror these Western solutions because we live in a different context for a reason. And this means, instead of making decisions like painting over Mombasa's town to make it look like Greece, blue and white, we should think about promoting the cultural and historical significance in the buildings in Old Town Mombasa. 
that's more relevant. You see, it gets kind of hard, but I think it's worth it. And I really hope you think it's worth it too, because if we strive to make these changes, then maybe, just maybe, our continent would look like this. Westernization, mirroring Western ideals, development, making progress as a continent, mutually exclusive events. They're not the same at all. There are a lot of gray areas when you try to define the two terms and draw a line, but that's because there have never been any boundaries between the two terms in history. The problem we're dealing with is very colorful, so there will be no black and white solution to it. And it seems pretty impossible, but that doesn't mean you sit back and go with the flow, because if you ignore this problem, then you are becoming an agent of modern colonization, and that is regretful. We must collectively make the efforts to put Africa on the map, this time for itself, not for the West to divide and conquer like it was ever theirs to take control of. The scramble for Africa was over a long time ago, and now the continent is in your very hands. What you choose to do with that will define Africa's future.